Welcome to day number four. Welcome to day number seven. Day number 12. Welcome to Do It Heartily. Aloha! Before we jump into God's Word, let's open in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you now. Thank you so much for everything you do. Thank you for uh, the sacrifice of those um, that died during the attack of Pearl Harbor. That's what we're going to be speaking on today. And uh, Lord, it means a little extra to us that live here on Oahu. Uh, it's just a place that we get to visit often. And uh, just pray that uh, we honor the memories of those that sacrifice themselves, but most importantly, we honor you, Lord, as you sacrificed yourself for the entire world. I pray that you'd speak through me now, remove the devil and his distractions. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, we're just going to be looking at one verse today. Open your Bibles to the book of Romans chapter number 10. Romans chapter number 10. So hold your place there. Uh, and as you uh, heard in my prayer, we're actually talking about Pearl Harbor. Now, I know today uh, that this video is being released is not the day of the attack of Pearl Harbor. Uh, Pearl Harbor happened December 7th, 1941, and that's coming up pretty soon. Uh, but I have several Pearl Harbor messages to talk about up to that date, and I didn't want to try to squeeze everything in on December 7th. I'd rather build up to it starting today. So we are taking a break from uh, Christmas messages. We'll come back to that a little bit later, but we are going to talk about Pearl Harbor. Okay, so uh, as I mentioned before, the attack on Pearl Harbor happened December 7th, 1941. And there was a man named Jake DeShazer. I'm hope, hopefully I'm pronouncing that name correctly. If I don't, I apologize, but that's the way I'm going to say it. Jake DeShazer. Now, he was not on Oahu. He was not uh, involved in the attack on Pearl Harbor. But he was involved what came after. So the attack on Pearl Harbor happened. Jake DeShazer, he was at home, and he was actually peeling potatoes. And he heard about the attack, and he's like... I'm joining, I want to fight the Japanese, they need uh, to pay for this, basically. And so he had a lot of hate in his heart for those, for the Japanese, for what they did to uh, Pearl Harbor, for what they did to America and, and American men and women who died that day. And so he decided to become a member uh, and a bomber, of a bomber crew in the United States Air Force. So the member of the bomber crew, what they do is they are responsible for sighting and releasing bombs. So you got your pilots and they're flying the plane and then the back, uh, the bomber guy, he, he looks down and he sights it and he lets it know, release, you know, you can release the bomb and he's trying to hit that direct hit and he's doing it way up in the air. And so that was Jake DeShazer's job. And he became a part of the famous Doolittle Raid in, uh, April 18th, 1942. So 1942, we're into the next year already. And the Doolittle Raid, it was after, actually named after their commander, Doolittle. And this was this specific raid was in retaliation to the attack on Pearl Harbor. So <clears throat> they fly over to Japan and they bombed Nagoya, Japan. But uh, once the, and the bombing was successful and they were trying to get back. However, they were forced to jump out of their plane and parachute into enemy territory. Jake, along with others, were captured and they were now POWs. POW stands for Prisoner of War. Uh, and guess what? He was a prisoner under Japanese uh, soldiers and guards for three years and four months. Okay, now this wasn't a prison where they gave you three meals a day and you could go outside and lift weights or have a computer room or anything like that. No, he was beaten regularly, all right? And uh, himself and uh, several other prisoners were malnourished, which means they're not getting enough food, they're not getting enough nutrients. And uh, the other people that were on the plane, they actually died in the prison, but Jake survived. But with his survival, he was filled with hate and bitterness. But after being in prison for two years, 
one of the Japanese guards gave Jake a Bible. Jake only had three weeks to read this Bible. It was only New Testament. He didn't have Old Testament. I don't know how they got access to a Bible, but he had a New Testament Bible. He said, okay, you can have it for three weeks. Jake came along this verse, Romans chapter 10, verse 9. Let's look at it together. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So, uh, right then and there, he believed and accepted Jesus Christ as his personal Savior. The hate and bitterness he had for the people of Japan melted away. In 1945, Jake was released from prison and went back to America. But listen to this, that was 1945. Then in 1948, just three years later, Jake and his wife Florence went back to Japan as missionaries for 30 years. God's word changed Jake's heart from hate to love, and it can do that for anybody. All right, so that's our story for today. Make sure to tune in again tomorrow. We love you. God loves you even more, and aloha.